Hello, my name is Steve Schoper. I'm the audio visual specialist for the Colorado Springs Fire Department and also a 36 year veteran of the fire service. Three nights ago, I was tasked with the job of getting video and photo documentation of what will now be known as the largest fire to hit Colorado Springs in its history. When the Waldo Canyon fire descended upon the subdivision of Mountain Shadows, our firefighters had one mission, structure protection, or in other words, save homes. This video is not about the destruction that occurred. Rather, it is about the homes, about the cul-de-sacs, and about the neighborhoods that were saved. They were saved by firefighters who acted professionally and did what they were trained to do. In the process, they endured horrific fire and weather conditions. They absorbed heat, ate smoke, dodged falling debris, and braced themselves against 65 mile an hour wind gusts. And yet when they decided on the right location to make their stand, they held their ground. We are so sorry for those of you who lost everything in this fire because we hold your loss in our hearts too. But we are very proud of what we saved. Here then is an inside look inside of Mountain Shadows on the night of June 26th. Here we are on top of Mesa Road. We're looking towards the Garden of the Gods, so we're looking westbound. Now the scene is cut to a northbound look here. We're still up on Mesa Road. Uh, heavy smoke coming down the mountain. Uh, very thick smoke and the winds have really, really picked up. Again, a quick pan shot and then we're off to the staging area, which is located at 30th and Garden of the Gods Road, and here I am panning down to look at that intersection. See our personnel running to jump in. Uh, looking at Centennial Boulevard northbound, uh, what struck me was that there was fire already on this road trying to cross Centennial Boulevard, and I knew that had come a long way down the mountain and was pretty nervous about what we were going to see once we went in a little bit further. This is Centennial Boulevard looking northbound. I don't know if you can see in the backdrop back there, but the hill is on fire back there. You can see the wind's now picked up. We're getting into the smoke. This is CSFD's trying to put this home out. It's just on the east side of Flying W Ranch Road and they don't want this fire crossing Flying W Ranch Road otherwise it'll take out all these homes blowing southward. So they're doing a good job of getting a knockdown on this and they're knocking it pretty hard. And had they not made a stop on that fire right there they would have lost 195 homes in that neighborhood but they made the stop, protected the exposures and the structures, did their job, and then they moved on to the next event that they had to do, of which there were plenty that evening. Again, this is still looking at the home, it's just burning down now. Nothing they could do to save that home, but a lot that they could do to save the neighborhood. This is a Wolf Ranch Road, looking southbound. Uh, these are homes, we're probably about uh, 200 yards away. Uh, these homes are all along a road called Courtney Drive, uh, all fully involved. Uh, and this is when I realized that we were in absolutely big, big trouble. This is going to be a firestorm. This entire area had me very, very nervous because the winds were swirling around. Sometimes you can see the clear pictures and then sometimes things look a little darker because the wind was blowing towards us and then it was blowing away from us. Um, I was did not want to move from this location for a little while until I felt comfortable enough to do so. I didn't want to become a fire victim myself, but I wanted to get 
the footage that we needed to show. That was a pretty eerie sound. Saving homes. And I didn't know anything until I got around some Italian chief sizing up things. This is a hot shot, shot crew from Redding, Redding, California. These guys were amazing. They run after the fire. They chase this fire down like they were going to make the fire afraid of them. And they were absolutely superb wildland firefighters. They did a great job of making sure that this fire did not spread northward. And they were very thorough and very fast. But it's stucco, it's got a class A roofing on it. Oh my goodness. As we came around the corner, this took my breath away. Uh, it's Ashton Park Place and Charing Court. They're doing a good job of gardening, making sure that it doesn't cross the line. And they are drawing the line here. This is the other side of this where I'm taping is uh, Ashton Park. And it looked like the entire neighborhood was going up. And yeah, when we get driving back down, here, driving north, we'll you can right see our fire trucks are positioned all along the road there. Okay, and what they right were here. doing was deciding they were going to make a stand here. here and they right did here. just that. They made a stand here and did not allow that fire to get across into the other neighborhood where there were hundreds of homes that would have been destroyed had they not been there. This is uh, up off of and Wilson Road Darien and then a way. Uh, street called Darien Way. Uh, that's a dead end. This single engine right company there. right here kept the fire from spreading and saved the entire street. It was a cul-de-sac, so it was kind of a dead end. <sighs> Boy. This is another scene that just took my breath away. I was going to ask for maybe a structure engine if you had one to make, make sure we can keep this one from burning. Yeah. Lucky enough, I mean, the, the, the house on the block, they had the fire hydrant right in front of it. It's the one that's burning to the ground, but yeah. we basically have a never-ending, I mean, right. never-ending supply of water to keep his neighbors from burning to the ground. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll get it. All right, hang in there. Yeah. It'll be a long night. They did a good job because it was standing the next day. So they did their job, ahead, but they around. stood yeah. their ground. Impressive, impressive crew. I don't know who they were. I hang think on, they were second, uh, hang federal. Hang on. Shot on this right here. And as we come around the corner here, you can see the sparks flying all over the place. It was raining fire down on us. Um, uh, this is why, you know, so many roofs caught on fire. And, uh, again, right back behind there was Huffman Court, okay, and so I went and stopped here. the vehicle. I looked in between a couple of houses just to check and so see how they were doing, this, and they, they were still making the it. They were still eating smoke and fire. They sure were enduring tremendous amounts of heat, but they, did a but good they job. saved this neighborhood. Because it only stayed in that cul-de-sac on one, one home. The exposure to the south of it. was spared and so the rest of the block was spared. This is Wilson Road and it's east of Flying W Ranch Road, some place that we did not want fire to be, but we had to do what we had to do and that was to defend these structures. This is a crew that's on Flying W Ranch Road, very close to Champaign Drive. Uh, the fire over here by Majestic Drive was intense and probably wiped out about 45 homes. But these guys took their stand, and then they saved everything south of there. And it was a very valiant effort on their part. Uh, this is, again, Flying W Ranch Road. Now, this is down by uh, Ashton Place. And the Manitou Springs Fire Department is uh, trying to protect a structure on the backside of the house and on the opposite side of the house is um, Denver Fire Department and they're putting up another master stream. This is still Manitou right here and now this is the opposite side. This is Denver Fire Department on Ashton Park Place 
Uh, uh, that one structure right is there, pretty well gone, but they were Protecting defending everything right north here. of that. And uh, this house did survive, as well as the other so houses far, that were north of that. They're doing a good job right so now. those two departments did a great job of getting a stop right there. Pretty much gone, but they're protecting the exposure, and so far they've been able to do that. This is Denver Fire Department again. They had five crews down here during the blaze. And they're putting up a water curtain. They're defending this home right here on the left, and this other home is pretty much gone. Uh, this home is generating a lot of sparks. Carry down across up here and landed on that roof right there and it's starting on fire. We have a hose in the front yard. Alright, we're here at the house two doors down from where Denver FD is. Clint found a hose, garden hose. We're gonna try and put this roof fire out. This will be the first fire and he did it. It's the first fire he's ever put out as a CSFD firefighter. Not yet sworn in, but he did it. Nice job, Clint. Nice job. All right, we got some stuff back up here, some embers and glows. He's gonna take care of it. Neighbors were smart enough to leave a garden hose out here. And I believe that might have saved their home. I know I'm broadcasting in the dark here, but I'm just going to narrow right here. Cause so, Clint did it with a garden hose. So he got it. He got it.